Hey, good morning and hi. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, this is Ty, Ty the Art Guy. I am going to do a little creative sketch this morning because we all have a little extra time on our hands. And in fact, my wife, my brilliant wife, Crystal, has uh, started a Facebook page called Quarantine Creativity. Please check it out. Please join. Please share with us what you're doing. I know we all have a lot of extra time on our hands. And uh, let's get a little creative. So to this morning, I am going to do uh, a little sketch. Uh, you know, as you know, Disney's closed. Uh, Disney never closes, and that really bothers a lot of us here. So one of my favorite things at the tiki is the tiki room. Uh, I don't know if anybody is familiar with the tiki room at Disney. I'm sure many of you are. But the tiki room is one of my favorites, and I'm not going to sing the song, Please Don't Make Me. Somebody else can do that on the quarantine creativity and that's both spelt with a Q by the way and the tiki room at the beginning of the while you're in line there's a tiki that introduces himself to everybody and says hello and welcomes everyone to the tiki room so that's going to be my subject of the sketch and I will post a photo so you guys can follow along with me or do your own and share what you did of the photo of the tiki room tiki and I will get started on this, and I hope you guys all join me in being a little creative, and let's have a little fun. Thanks. Yeah, Altoids. Thank you. Mm, I love Altoids. And uh, this is my little art kit over here. This is my watercolor kit. There we go. Move Mr. Narwhal and Humphrey. Move you guys right here. And let's see, my brushes are right here. Oops, there they are. They all spilled out. Klutzy. Somebody says I'm klutzy. I don't know who would say that. All right. A little dry pad there to test my paint. All right, first off, I'm going to do a little drawing. Here we go. This is just an ink pen. This is pretty simple stuff. Um, I like to use the Micron uh, 05. Um, you know, so there you go. That's pretty cool. This is a 0.5. And I am uh, just going to scope. Now, by the way, I'm pretty loose. I'm not a very accurate guy. As you know, I'm a caricature artist. I'm a loosey-goosey. I love to draw fast and loose. You guys can do whatever you want in your style. It take as long as you want. I'm just going to do this pretty quickly. And um, we're going to have a lot of fun. That's the bottom line is we're here to have some fun. So, with that, I'm going to start up here, and, you know, there's these birds. I remember the birds. Um, they talk at the tiki room, and I'm going to uh, just have some fun, and nothing too important, nothing too serious, and uh, a little scribbling, and there we go, and if I could... Uh, if I could turn that music up, that would be awesome. I love the Tiki Room. I'm not going to sing the song. There we go. And we're going to come back over here. I love that the birds in the tiki room talk. I think my favorite thing about the tiki room is when you go in and you see people that have never done it before and they've never been in the tiki room. I love the look on their faces when they get in there and they're like, what the hell is going on here? And, you know, the talking birds and, you know, people don't have a lot of imagination and stuff like that. But I think you guys are all brilliant. You just got to allow yourself to be brilliant. That's the trick. A lot of people I meet and draw always say, I'm not creative, I'm not creative. But truly, truly we all are. It's a human trait. And I think a lot of people are more creative than they think. I know mechanics and engineers are brilliant. Uh, I could break a screwdriver by picking it up. So, you know, that's just me. We all have our strengths and talents and our skills. I should probably stop talking and draw a little bit. So... You know, tiki's. I always wanted to get a giant tiki for the garden. Maybe I'll do that during this time of quarantine. I got a lot of wood over here. I can 
learn to carve. That'll be a creative thing to do. We've been gardening. I'm sure if you guys are following my wife's uh, group called Quarantine Creativity on Facebook, she did that so that we could all share what we're doing in this time of uh, tribulations. You know, this is uh, kind of fun stuff. All right. So, I may do a little improvising here. I know the tiki is probably not as detailed as this, and yet at the same time, it's not very detailed of a sketch at all. So, you know, it uh, comes down, and that one goes there. And I like listening to music when I sketch. Uh, jazz is my favorite. Um, I will do a post one day if the demand demands it. Um, different music and different rhythms affect the way I draw and paint. And I think that's kind of funny. I didn't notice this about the Tiki guy. He has these tassels. You really learn to look and see things differently when you draw and sketch. And I think that's the beauty of being an artist, is I've learned to observe and see things in different ways. And I just enjoy that so much. I think that's why I like doing graphic recording and meeting sketches and uh, just doing observations at lectures and such. It's a, you get a different, the artist perspective, I guess, if you, if you will, and, and so we're going to get this guy drawn out. He's in a bed of ivy on this really cool pot here, or kettle or something. It's a water feature, and, um. I know it gets darker in the bottom. I'm going to cheat a little bit with some line work. I know there's a lot of brilliant people out there that can do a much better job than I do, but I like the way I draw, and that's the only thing that matters, is you draw the way you wish. And, and uh, there we go. I'm going to put some leafage. Very detailed leafage, right? It's just a scribbling. There we go. I hope other people share what they've done. I'll post a photo of my reference later. It's a reference I took. We, my wife and I actually went to Disney on the last night, day that they were open, last Sunday or Sunday before last. I've lost track of time. It seems like forever since we've interacted with humans. Water is one of the hardest things, especially running water, moving water. And that's one of the hardest things for me to illustrate. Maybe somebody will post something about their way of treating waterfalls and painting water or rushing water. I'm looking at you, Scott Shaw, Antoine. I'm looking at you, um, Bob Camp, Vincent Waller, a bunch of other guys. I'm looking at all you guys to share how y'all do illustrated water. That would be brilliant to share on this group. And um, let's have a little fun here. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. All right. So I don't want to get too rushed, but there we go. And then eventually it pans off. There's a little light there. And there we go. There, there. So once we get our inking, we will uh, play with some other stuff and um, have some fun. There we go. And then um, the surface changes. That was in the background there. And so now I'm going to change my line direction to show a different surface. Again, everybody got their styles and techniques. I'll be the first to tell you that I will be great at teaching you what not to do in painting and drawing. And he has his own little enclosure here and you know faux brick and faux stone and such. 
And then we're just going to tighten that up a little bit. There we go. Nice. Nice little scribbles. I love the scribble. I'm a scribbler. When I go on cruise gigs or I travel, I like to do uh, urban sketching, and I'm a very gesture-oriented person. Um, there's a person on Facebook called Rhoda Draws. Y'all should check her out. She's brilliant and fast and loose style of sketching, and I just, I love it. You get a little atmosphere, you get a little attitude of things, and it doesn't have to be exact. That's what photography is for. And even still, you can get style and technique and emotion and mood out of photography, but you can also do the same with urban sketch, you know, scribbling fast and loose. And we get this background kind of faked in here. I didn't realize how much detail there really was in this. I thought it was going to be a simple thing, but now it's getting a little complicated. And a lot of texture. And we'll cover that with some watercolor. But this is just a... There we go. There we go. There we go. Make some rocks. I feel like Bob Ross. Happy rocks. Little cute rocks. There we go. And then we come over here and get that in there. And I'm in my backyard, my lanai. That's my cardinal. He's probably on the feeder. That might be Mrs. Cardinal on the feeder. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I love the bird calls in my yard. There. Okay. So there is the uh, first sketch. And uh, here I'll show, show it a little bit here. This is, this is the inking. There we go. See, I did that while we were talking. Nice, huh? Yeah. It's a little loose. Um, it's not very detailed, and I think it's kind of fun. It's got some fun lines. It's got some fun quality to it. Like I said, I'm a cartoonist by nature, and I'm a scribbler, so I'm not much on detailed work and realism. So there you go. That's the sketch. I'm going to close off the pen tip. Mr. Narwhal and I are going to have some tea. I have green tea here. This is a... If Twinnings wants to send me a case of tea, this is a green tea. I accept a case of tea during this uh, time of quarantine. Thank you very much. And Mr. Narwhal has a little peppermint tea in him. So Humphrey and Narwhal are good friends. You gotta make sure you drink this on the right side so you don't poke your eye out. Mmm, good stuff. Alright. Now then, this is my little kit. I travel with this. And, uh, in watercolor, we always like to go light to dark. So I'm going to, uh, take some yellow and throw it in here. I'm gonna. Hit some spots, nothing too serious. I'm gonna, two yellows are real close together. I'm just gonna blend them together. I have a lemon and a cadmium medium, and uh, I just kind of blend them and have some fun with them there. Nothing too detailed. I'm gonna leave it like that a little bit. I might get a little yellow down here and this roughage and this green. Uh, that way, when I come in, it'll make some brighter green, and it'll be playful. Um, he's holding a uh, torch. It's a wood torch. It's not a real torch. So here's that. And I'm going to brush it away. And then uh, so there's a little yellow here. I should probably use a smaller brush. I had this one in my hand, so, you know. There we go. There. That's that. Now, I'm going to get in here. Uh, we're going to go a little darker. we got a little orange, a little yellow, a little um, yellow ochre, and some earth tone. I'll share that in a little bit. I'm going to do a lightly. We always go light to dark. We can finish later and darken them up if we need. And um, put this in here. And we're going to... I like to block things out. 
When I'm doing caricatures, I do a very fast gesture blocking of the face. And uh, so that's kind of how I treat my painting. And uh, this gives me some tone and value. It gives me an idea where I'm going. And uh, we're going to have a little fun here. Mm -hmm. A little more water, a little lightness, a little earthy. A little earth tone there, a little earth tone there. And we're going to keep going here. And there. There, there, there. There, 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 and there, and there, and there. All right. And then. I think it's time for me to get a smaller brush. So I'm going to take this one right here. This is uh, do some things. We're going to start playing around. Um, I'm still going to stay on the orange side and the yellow side of things. Uh, this is a. Uh, a little more red in that. Right there. Put a little in there, let it blend in. Yeah. Sometimes I get some bleeding. I'm kind of rushing this. Things are still wet. That's okay. That's what I love about watercolor. I can make happy accents. A little yellow ochre in there and catch that underside a little bit there. There we go. Dry that off a little bit on my pad. Yeah. And come over here now. We got a little yellow ochre there. There we go. This is a little blue green bird, so we're gonna we're gonna hit him brightly the bright green. I got a little sap green here. There we go. A little sap green on his tail to go with the yellow ochre a little bit. A little earth tone. There we go. He's got a little yellow. We're going to get a little. Yellow. And we're going to take some more of this yellow ochre. We're going to move some other areas. Let that dry before I come back. There you go. Brass ring. There we go. We got some flameage. Flameage. Is that a word? I don't know. There we go. There we go. Take some of that set green. And we're going to get in here. Yes, there we go. A little set green. Playful. Now I got a little apple green. And then some viridian will probably come and finish that off a little bit. A little Jazz darker. I'm going to just plop that around a little bit. All right. There. There we go. A little playfulness. Let it drip over the container here a little. There we go. Now, a little, little of this green in here.
There we go. I wish I could sing. I wish I could play musical instruments as I listen to jazz. Alright. Now then, we're going to play with this a little bit. Here we go. I'm going to introduce some cold colors. So. There. Leave a little light there, that'll be kind of nice. And there we go. And lighten that up a little bit. A little. It's supposed to be stone, but you know. We're... There we go. All right. Nice. Now, this is going to get darker earlier, so I'm going to take some dirty area of my palette and undertone that. This is an area of my palette that has uh, purples and blacks mixed in. So I'm just going to lightly get this ready to go and get a little darker. And, uh, nothing too exact. I'm not used to talking and drawing. Usually I'm very quiet when I do watercolors on my own. Those that know me and have worked with me at gigs will say, no, Ty is not very quiet. He talks too much to his guests. That's the fun. I love connecting with people. So this quarantine is really hard on me. I'm usually very uh, interested in the guests that I meet. And... I just, you know, I've always known that everybody has a story. And I love that so much about my job of connecting with people at trade shows, conventions, weddings. Oh my God, I love weddings. It sounded funny. All right, so here we go. I'm put a little purple in here. Purple is a great way to shadow some things. Um, Portrait artists will tell you purple makes a great shadowing value. Greens also make a great shadowing value in portrait work. Maybe one day we'll show that if anyone's interested, if anyone cares. Got a little bleed, but that's okay. That's what watercolor is all about, man. Hang on here. This is going to get light and dark in some areas. You can always go darker in watercolor. It's really hard to go lighter in watercolor. A lot of guys will tell you that. A lot of people, and ladies too. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be. And we'll separate this in a minute. Here we go. I'm just getting tone. Values will come later. A little stretched out there. There we go. All right. He's got some ear tassels that go back to the yellow and the orange and the red. So I'm going to get a little darker to separate it from the flame. This is a little crimson red. This is what I would call is a cool red, not like you know cool. I mean like value, tone, temperature, I guess, if you will. It's just got a little, it's just cool. It's got a little cooler value to it than, say, a, a cadmium. The Lizarin Crimson is a cool red. Cadmium is a hot red. Not like, you know, never mind. Just keep drawing. There we go. All right. Yeah, so I know I got this on my brush. Is there anything else I want to add on this? Let me get a little more cooler on here. There we go. And I'm going to get a little undertone here. Get a, little, a little deeper on that blue right there. There we go. That's kind of interesting. 
Well, I got that blue. I'm going to mix it with some of that gray, that purple, gray. Um, a little burnt umber here. Payne's gray is my favorite. Back to the little blue to that Payne's gray there. I got a nice little gray tone, and we're going to go right there. Turn lights back on. I'm just trying to stay dark on one side and trying to simulate some lighting, but there we go. My radio died. All right, separate those hands a little bit. If you get an area that you didn't want to be dark, you can dry your brush off a little bit and you can pull the paint right up if it's still wet. There, just like that. There. There we go. And a little Payne's gray. It's not quite a black. A little ultramarine with it. There you go. Should probably use a smaller brush, shouldn't we? There we go. I'm putting a little blue in this stone color here, and I'll show you in a little bit why. There, cute. All right, now he's sitting in this water treatment. It's like a copper brass, old looking. So I've got a little umber, I got a little sepia, I got some burnt umber, and I'm going to put a little uh, poker in there, and then I'm just going to come in here. If it blends with the green, that's okay. A little earth tone in here. My earth tones in my little palette is tiny. I know there's a lot of guys out there that like a huge palette. My little one, I've only got like, I don't know, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. I got 20 little half pans. I guess that's plenty. Seeing that, you know, there's only three primary colors. All right, I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to go back in the background a little bit. This has got uh, some Indian red. And, uh, yeah, a little Indian red and some sepia here. And I want to get a little burnt umber in there. Yeah, there we go. Not that much. Just a little earthy. I want it to be in the background a little bit. It's going to blend a little bit with the bird. So hang on here. And... and this is just a, I'm just going to keep a loose outline. Some people like tighter outlines. There we go. And get around that and that. Keep some white space. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's going to bleed or not. There we go. As it gets a little lower, it gets a little lighter, a little brighter. So here we'll throw some of that in there and we'll get it all together and blend in a minute. Let's just get this covered. Just play with that. There we go. There we go. Yeah. I missed it. Tiki room. It is one of my favorites. I'll be glad we open back up. 
I've gotten to be such a person at Disney and now my joy of going to Disney is sharing the joy with other people or more like I think I enjoy watching people reaction to the joy and happiness that Disney offers. I think that's more entertaining to me than being there myself. I get a kick out of the bright looks on kids' faces when their eyes light up. I use my finger as a sponge. Wipe that off there. I'm kind of rushing this a little bit because I know there's nothing more fun than watching paint dry when you're quarantined, but you know. Yeah, I got a lot of water in here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that down. There we go. Probably should have used a big brush. Put a little texture and leave that out a little bit. Neat. There we go. All right. Come over here on this side. Come straight down real fast. I don't know what happened to my music. There you go. The radio station that must be in their quarantine, they stopped. This background's bigger than I thought it was. I'm saving the hardest part for the end. That's that water treatment. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. I bet there's people out there who's got techniques and styles that they prefer. I'm going to get a little darker up here. There, that little value really pops. There we go. Take some of that off, bring it over here, pick some of that up, take it over there, and there we go. I'm going to take a dry brush, pull some of that off right there. There we go. My burnt umber is really, really wet. That's okay. I got a tiny brush, maybe I should use it. I'm too lazy to switch brushes. down the edge. I know I'm going to get there. Might as well play that up a little bit. Okay. I feel like I kind of screwed the pooch on that, but it looks okay. Alright, partner and change it. I'm going to 
gonna get there. Yep, there in a minute. know is this is a lot better than watching the news these days. That's all I gotta say about that. And I know we will all overcome and we will prevail. Although I know we're all heartbroken and sick about those that are ill. I have friends that have contracted the virus and it makes me sick and sad. Just heartbroken. I'm just heartbroken. And I love them all. And I'm sure everybody else does too. In the same situation. That's the irony. We are all in the same same situation here. And when that area dries up, I'm gonna come back in and separate it a little bit. Now for the hard part. We got this water. I have a blue that I like to use when I'm in cruise gigs or if I'm on the coast or on the beach or whatever. A phyllo blue, really a bright blue. And uh, you can get really dark or really light depending on your water quality that you put in that. So I'm going to start throwing that around. I know there's the uh, simulation of water. There's white and that area gets pretty dark. And then that goes there. And so I know there's a light inside underneath like pool lights. You kind of heighten the attitude. I probably should have watered those first. So I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to make some green because I'm throwing in some lemon yellow. That's okay. I like the value of that. I want to get a really strong meow yeah, right there. Maybe a little cadmium. No, I can't get it on my brush. I must not have a very wet brush. There we go. A little cadmium in there. All right. Now we're going to go back in here. Our blues again. A little ultramarine to make the bottom part. I like the darkness you can get. Uh, it's almost a black if you put uh, burnt umber and ultramarine together. That's a cool thing in the watercolor. I'm sure there's a lot of people telling me my technique is not orthodox and that's okay. You don't have to be orthodox to be creative. Just have a little fun. Alright, that feels a little dry-ish, maybe. For the sake of the hurry, I'm going to get a little purple because this is going to be a dark with my, with my burnt umber. I don't use a true black very often. Um, I'm not sure why. I just like um, creating blacks with other colors. This one gets a little warmer with the purple. And I can soften the edge a little bit. It kind of has a dark thing behind this curtain. Yeah, you know, maybe a little. Haynes Gray is almost a black. I guess I contradicted myself there. And over here, we'll do the same thing. And we'll do a, a little darker up here on top. Like there's something there, like a roof, so to speak. And come down here. I'm going to soften those edges a little bit in a minute.
kind of get in here. The values a little changed on one side from lighting, so I'm gonna soften that up a little bit. Maybe not that dark. Maybe I'm gonna take that out a little bit. There we go, soften that edge up. Soften that edge up. Now I find myself trying to value match things, and maybe I shouldn't get that involved or that detail with it. Maybe I should let it go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Take a dry brush again and bring some of this off. This is a 140 pound paper. Um, I like a 300 pound paper. You can really work the tar out of a 300 pound paper, but this is what I use. It's kind of fast. Um, you can beat it up a little bit, putting paint on, putting paint off. Now then, I'm going to. Take a little blue here, maybe not, well, yeah, that's too much. Come off. There you go, I just wanted to tone those teeth a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna leave the eyes like that. I could put some yellow in the eyes. Maybe we'll do that, maybe we'll. I got this little brush right here. Get a. Paper. In Florida, I find the humidity affects. How much water I use sometimes. I look forward to seeing other people's creativity. I like to see other artists post their demonstrations because we do nothing but learn from one another. And. Uh, I think that's the brilliance of everything. Humanity. We learn from one another. There we go. That bird probably had more blue in him, but speaking of blue. I am almost done with this. I could probably stop right now and I'd be ahead of the curve. I'm probably going to overwork it. So hang on and let's watch as I overwork this to death. I should keep it fresher, but I guess I feel like I need to make an oil painting out of a watercolor. Hang on. I wish I had a little more yellow in that right there. Let's soften that up a little bit. Probably have to take some of that off there. Lighten that up. Pull that off a little bit. There we go. And a little ultramarine in there. There. That's the black I made with an ultramarine and burnt umber. It's not really a true black. It's just a, it's a great way to... There we go. A little water. There we go. So there. Yeah, it's enough damage. Maybe I can put a little more value in this right here. Maybe I can do a little separation. This little torch. So we can get a little more value. I'm using a purple. I'm not sure the name of the purple by 
branding standards, but yeah. yeah. I guess that's what I have violet to be exact. Water helps. Just kind of do it on the side, one side, and highlighting some things. And there we go. Separate this ribbage. All right. Now I think I broke just about every rule there is to break. But there we go. That's that. So, you know, it ain't exact, but it's fun. And I enjoyed it. And it made me think a little bit about the day, and I got to pray a little bit about those that are sick. And I hope they all recover, because I miss them very much. You guys have a beautiful day, and I hope you share some of your work. Have a beautiful time. Bye-bye.